justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open and what you conceived. From big to small shall today. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome again to the inevitable journey. In the last episodes, we talked about the certainties and we wondered and we questioned the certainty of the ummah in regard to these four certainties. Once it comes to death, once it comes to the graveyard, once it comes to the day of resurrection, and once it comes to the everlasting abode in Jannah or in the hellfire, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we mentioned the two diseases, and they are diseases because anything that takes your eye off the ball, that distracts you from doing what you were made to do would be a disease. The Ummah, brothers and sisters in Islam, lost a lot because of that disconnection between the phases of the inevitable journey and the one phase that they are in, which is the life of this world. And it is the time now for us to come back to our deen, come back and learn about our creed. And the inevitable journey is one part of that creed. Brothers and sisters in Islam, for you to understand that our creed comprises three main pieces, main parts. Part number one is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed. Who is Allah? His names, attributes. Allah is the Lord, the Rabb. And Allah is the Ilah, the God to be worshipped. And the violation of that ibadah, of that worship. This is piece number one. Part number one of a Muslim creed. The second piece or the second part is the message and the messengers, the books, the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to us to remind us of his oneness and to inform us why we were created and also to direct us to work for the third piece which is the hereafter, which is the inevitable journey. The third piece, brothers and sisters in Islam, is the one that has to do with the hereafter. And this is the one that the inevitable journey, inshallah, these series of episodes will help you understand bi'idnillahi ta'ala a lot regarding the hereafter. I just wanted you to learn and know that this has been the approach and the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ regarding educating the first generation of Muslims. Fi Sahih al-Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu anha said that awwalu ma nazala min al-Qur'an, the first thing that was revealed for us in the Qur'an, in Mecca, who's Allah and Jannah and Hellfire. This is what they learned for almost 
13 years. Look, when the verses of the commands were revealed in Medina, look at the reaction of that blessed generation of Muslims. Just two incidents I'll share with you. And I really want you to understand so you can help yourselves and help the Ummah. Because this is our way back right here. Look, the first incident when the verses of the hijab were revealed. And the hadith of Sahih Bukhari also. Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha and Ibn Mardawi. Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha as well. Ya ayyuhan nabi, listen, a command. O Prophet, قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ وَنِسَائِكَ وَبَنَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِي بِهِنْ ذَلِكَ أَذْنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَ فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ Till your wives, your daughters, and the women of the believers to cover themselves. This is a verse in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ahzab. Look at the reaction of the women who were taught the creed earlier in Mecca. Aisha radiallahu anha said, رحم الله نساء, نساء الأنصار May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy in the women of Al-Ansar. Another wording, رحم الله نساء المهاجرين الأول May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the women of the, the wives of the uh, first generation who migrated from Mecca to Medina. They were wearing something called mintaq or extra clothes on them. They tore it and they covered themselves immediately. Because they know who is Allah. They know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to command something, that command must be met with, we hear and we obey. And that's the one difference between us. Go now to, and I'm not being negative or nagging, go now to a sister and tell her to put her hijab on. She's going to say, no, let me wait until I get married. Let me wait until I... No, that's the one difference. Because the creed, the knowledge regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regarding the message and the messengers, regarding the hereafter, they knew that if you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that graveyard will be a bit of fire. The standing in the day of resurrection will be painful and the abode will be the hellfire. And they knew that the reward of the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be a garden underneath the ground, a comfortable standing in the day of resurrection and everlasting abode in Jannah. That's what led them to work, sister, brother, because they had a visualization of the inevitable journey. Look at one of the companions, beautiful hadith, fi sahih Muslim, Hanzalah ibn Asid, radiyallahu anhu, famous hadith that knows in, known in the sunnah, nafaqa Hanzalah. You know why Hanzalah thought that he is a hypocrite? Why? Because once he is with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would describe to him Jannah and Nar. Look what he said, we believe in it so much like we see it with our own eyes. We see ourselves in Jannah and we see ourselves in the hellfire. The way that he describes it to us, sallallahu ala Muhammad. And once he's away from the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa he sees himself a little bit busy with this world. Hatta idha kharajna min indi. Once we leave him, then we start mingling with our wives and with our children. Ah, this is dunya. No, that's why he thought he's not doing enough. The same exact thing. The hereafter, if you learn about it, will be a powerful charge that will charge all of you. Motivate all of you to work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and work to spare yourselves. The other incident and uh, I was reading lately that in America, in the 1930s, more or less, 
they invested somewhat eighty million dollars. Nineteen thirty, eighty million dollars is a lot of money. You know to do what? To stop people from drinking alcohol. This is before the lobbying for alcohol started, but once America was so. Now, what happens at the end of that campaign? Please do not drink while you're driving. Compare this with this. People who were taught the creed, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who were taught Jannah, they learned about the hellfire, they learned about everything, they understood the consequences of the things that they do in this world, in Mecca, look when the verse, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسُرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْسٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Alcohol, gambling, are tools of shaitan. Stop it. Keep away from it. A caller went through the Medina that day. إن الله حرم الخمر. الله سبحانه وتعالى ميد الكحول حرام. Immediately jars of alcohol were spilled. They tell you that the corridors of Medina that day were filled with liquor, spilled out. Immediate response, immediate action. سمعنا وأطعنا. You know why? Because the creed were established. They learned who's Allah. They learned about the message and the messages. They learned about the inevitable journey the hereafter. And that's where we need to go back and re-educate ourselves about it. Because this will help us commit ourselves again to this deen. And again, this is the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith Abdullah ibn Abbas. رضي الله عنهما في صحيح البخاري when he sent معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه to Yemen what did he tell him يا معاذ إنك تأتي قوما أهل كتاب and this hadith goes to the brothers who live in the western world you live you will come to people of the book listen ليكن أول ما تدعوهم إليه لا إله إلا الله let be the first thing that you explain to them share with them is la ilaha illallah, is the aqeedah, is the creed. Then, after that, tell them about the salah, tell them about the fasting, tell them about hajj. Of course, this does not apply to us, brothers and sisters in Islam. You still have to implement the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are commanded because you're already a Muslim. But what you need to do is you need to re-educate yourselves about your creed once again and don't take it for granted. And you will see, once you learn more about your creed, which made of who is Allah, the message and the messages, and the hereafter, the inevitable journey, you will find out that you will fall in love with Islam once again. Let's talk about the inevitable journey more, inshallah, after a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before Man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. The tension there. What, what about the North Korean uh, nuclear program and uh, the six uh, uh, party uh, talks? Uh, how will the tension there affect a relationship between US? and China. Uh, they did that uh, early in 1993 and after long discussion and negotiation finally they stopped the program. Will the world be able to stop this flow of secrets? Will it affect international relations or were there simply um, you know basic known facts for most experts and, and most diplomats? And uh, we don't know if there's more to come. It's information war.
of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the inevitable journey, brothers and sisters in Islam. When the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam talked about the conditions of the ummah at the time that we live right now, Hadith Thawban, radiyallahu anhu, fi Sunan Abi Dawood, he said, "Yushiku an tada'a alaykum al umam." Nations will call one another against you, Muslims. One companion asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Amin Qillatin Nahnu Yawma Idi Ya Rasulallah. It is because we are outnumbered, O Messenger of Allah. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No, you're many, many of you. بل أنتم يومئذ كثير ولكنكم غثاء كغثاء السيل. But your impact is like the impact of the foam of a downpour or running stream. That white thing that you see on the top of a running stream. Listen. ولا ينزعن الله من قلوب أعدائكم المهابة منكم. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take out the chest of those who are your enemies, your fear. They will not fear you anymore. وَلَيَقْذِفَنَّ فِي قُلُوبِكُمُ الْوَهَنْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast into your hearts الْوَهَنْ The word الْوَهَنْ means weakness. But yet the companions wanted to learn a little bit more about this world, about this word. So one companion said, وَمَا الْوَهَنُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ What is الْوَهَنُ, O Messenger of Allah? Here it is, brothers and sisters in Islam. That's why I'm quoting the whole hadith. حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ The love of this dunya. Because you see the dunya you see this life as separate from the inevitable journey. You just want this world, but you don't love this world to help you to be comforted in the graveyard, which is the place where we go to after we die, to be comforted in the day, in the ground of the day of resurrection, and to be taken to Jannah is the love of the dunya. The love of the dunya that will harm our hereafter, will harm the next phases of the inevitable journey. That is why we dislike death. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the key for the ummah right now, I stress and I stress and I stress is to go back and re-educate themselves regarding their creed. And as I quoted earlier, the creed is made of three components. The inevitable journey, insha'Allah, will help you with the third one, which is Ad-Darul Akhirah, the hereafter, insha'Allah. If you recall, in the last episodes, we tried to talk about why the Muslims are heedless in a state of carelessness in spite of receiving all these authentic texts that tells them what will happen to them after this dunya. And we mentioned the first reason and briefly talked about the remedy for it. And the first reason was having long and false hope. في صحيح البخاري الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said the son of Adam grows old and two things grow old with him طول الأمل long hope 
and hub dunya and the love of this world. And those are the two diseases that we have, the two things that distract us from working for the hereafter, like the first generation of Muslims did. Tool al amal, long hope. So I want you to understand so that it's natural. It's something that was built in. And has it been for this, nobody would have worked. But this must be treated. Because if you allow the perception or the feeling that you will live for a long time, which is wrong, or death still far away from you because you're healthy or because you're rich, or it's wrong. It will distract your mission. And we stressed and mentioned that the solution to this is to remember death. And this is the advice of the Prophet wasallam. And I want to address those who argue people talking about death to them. Argue with people who talk to, about death to them. They basically want it, you know, to be told good things and... Why are you bringing all these bad things about Akhi? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of mankind. The one who revealed the Quran, the Torah, the gospel to mankind. He talked about hell in the Quran. He talked about Jannah in the Quran. He, where, where are we talking? Where are we getting all this text about the hellfire and about Jannah? It's from the Quran. So, your maker, your creator, already is telling you about it. Now it's my job and the job of those who deliver is to give it to you. Yes, I agree. We should balance the targheeb and the tarheeb. We should give a glad tiding at the same time when we warn you. Rusulan, mubashirin wa mundirin. I agree. A balance must be created. But you cannot abandon you cannot dismiss from your guidance talking about the graveyard. You cannot dismiss from your guidance talking about the hellfire, the horrible, terrifying scenes in the day of resurrection. This is against the teachings of the Quran. And that is why we're talking about this now. Here is a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذِي مِنْ لَذَّاتِ الْمَوْتِ Talk about death. A person who remembers death, who is a believer, will feel comfortable. Because if he's going through hardships, he knows that this hardship will stop with death. Because a person who believes will find comfort in death. The angels who will come to take his soul, listen, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Fear not. Fear not from us. Fear not from what to come. Don't grieve over what you left behind you. Your children, your family members, don't grieve over them. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ We will be your helpers, your guardians in this dunya and in the hereafter. In the hereafter. Look forward to the hereafter. Huh? In the hereafter, in Jannah, you will get whatever you want. Whatever you want. That's the start. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, said that these angels descend upon the deceased at the time of death, and when he rises from the graveyard, when resurrection day is here. Brothers and sisters in Islam, that is why a believer finds comfort in death. Because normally he's tested. Because as we quoted in the last episode, that this world is not a resting place and we have to fix that. Akhi, the life that you're dreaming of in this world, you will never have it. That life is going to be dandy and everything is going to be cool. And tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. That tomorrow is in Jannah, Akhi. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, was asked, when are we going to rest? <laughs> you know what he said? 
He said, when we enter Jannah, we'll rest. But in this world, huh, chains of tests, chains. As a matter of fact, if your test is over, then it's time for you to be gone, to be called to the next world, to the next phase of your inevitable journey. Because the nature of this life is to be tested in it. So a believer will rest. A kafir, the rest of the world will rest from him. The earth, the trees, the mountains, and on and on. Brothers and sisters in Islam, you will find out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to our messenger to prescribe upon us deeds that are so rewarding. But beside this, the purpose and the wisdom behind the prescription of these deeds is to remember the hereafter. في صحيح ابن حب في سنن ابن صحيح ابن حبان ومسند الإمام أحمد الرسول صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم سد صحيح أبي سعيد حديث أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه عود المريض visit the sick واتبع الجنائز and follow the جنازة procession why فإنها تذكركم بالآخرة it will remind you with the hereafter look the hadith, beautiful hadith, hadith Abi Huraira, hadith al-Qiratan, the two chunks of three words. If you pray janazah on a deceased, and also if you follow his janazah until he is finally buried, you will get two rewards, two qirats, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and the hadith of Sahih bukhari hadith Abi Huraira, radiallahu an, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what is qirat? He said, two huge chunks of reward, as huge as the mountain of Uhud each one of them, just to pray janazah on a deceased and just to follow, to bury him. Look, كنت قد نهيتكم عن زيارة القبور ألا فزوروها I have forbidden you from visiting the graveyards. Now I want you to visit it. Why? Because you're going to make dua for the deceased? No, 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 no. فإنها تذكركم بالآخرة It will remind you with the hereafter. So this is the methodology. Even some of the actions that we're supposed to do is supposed to remind us. Look, when the Prophet ﷺ, and this is, goes to the sisters, delivered his famous sermon to the women in uh, the day of Eid, Hadith Abdullah ibn Abbas in Sahih Bukhari, Ya ma'ashir al-nisa, tasaddaqna, fa'inni ra'aytu kunna akthar ahli nar. Oh, women, give sadaqah. Because I seen the majority of the dwellers of the hellfire are from there, from the women, huh? the non-believers women. Huh? The believers women are, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all believers bi uh, Inshallah. But uh, just to, to conclude, uh, you see, Rasulullah hinted to them, motivated them to spend because of this hellfire. And you know what? He gave them that nasiha on the day of Eid. So, please, let's talk about it. So we get ready for it, insha'Allah. In the next episode, we will talk more about the inevitable journey. Please join us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open From big to small shall today be revealed Your deeds shall then be weighed in a scale This shall determine if you pass or fail Brothers and sisters, I'd like to say